friends and enemies, welcome back to Brownlow Books. It is still June, so I am still doing my Pride Month reads, and uh, this week I have a romance. I was due for a romance on this channel anyway, so it's perfectly fine. It makes total sense. Um, I was looking for an adult one, to be entirely honest. I could not find an adult trans romance that did not include something horrible, and I was like, we're not gonna do that. <laughs> uh, so I read Neat Cute Diary by Emery, Emery? Emery? Yeah, Emery Lee. <laughs> so Noah, that's Noah. Uh, Noah is a trans boy who is 16 and white Japanese and Afro-Caribbean. So they lived in Florida. Their family is moving to California. So his brother goes to school in Colorado and he is staying with his brother in Colorado for the summer. Well, the parents figure out where they're living, buying a house, moving in, etc. Okay, so we got that bit. <laughs> Noah runs something called The Meet Cute Diary, um, a blog on Tumblr. I've never used Tumblr. <laughs> um, <laughs> so he runs a blog on Tumblr about cute trans meets, you know, meet cutes. It's pretty self-explanatory if you know what a meet cute is, right? <laughs> so he runs that and people love it, but then a troll comes along and is like, mm, it's all fake, which it is, unfortunately, at that point. So anyways, Noah goes to interview for a job, does not get the job, but meets Drew there a 18 year old guy who lives in Denver. So that's our big romance for this. It shouldn't be. <laughs> um, I fucking hate Drew. I hope he fucking dies. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. Drew fucking sucks. Okay. <laughs> um, First of all, he's 18, he drinks, he smokes, he smokes pot, he plans all these things to do with Noah, but like, they're not things that Noah would enjoy and just like doesn't seem to care at all what Noah would actually enjoy. It's like, I like hiking, so we're going hiking. Like, that's what it is, right? Very, very forceful. And then does a thing. And that thing is they're at a party with his friends. And one of his friends is like, oh, Drew, I didn't know that you liked guys. And he goes, I don't. Excuse me? So yeah, he says, no, I don't. Noah's special. It's the full sentence. And I'm just like, oh, you fucking asshole. Because Noah, well, I said is trans, is like brand new trans. Like, was in Florida and was kind of like... And so, like, has just cut their hair and has just started, like, dressing a lot more masculine and, like, experimenting still, right? And so just know to be like, I don't know is special. Fuck you. Fuck you, Drew. Fuck you so much. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but Noah meets Devin at a summer camp where they both work. Uh, Devin is 17. How much of this do I want to spoil for you? Blanket warning for spoilers. <laughs> um, Devin is 17 and works at this like summer camp for kids. And so they get paired together to be like counselors together. And uh, Devin actually went to school in Florida with Noah. What a coincidence. And they had come out as a girl previously. Devin is... Devin is non-binary. <laughs> we'll go with that. Um, Devin starts in our story as a boy and it ends up being more of a non-binary character. Well, yeah. Spoiling all of it. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. New Devin from school was like, oh my god, you gave me the courage to come out as a boy, blah blah blah, all these things. And then they're like, wait. Because Devin's obviously not a girl. Noah says some shitty things. Noah's a spoiled brat and says shitty things sometimes, and I'm like, that's teenagers, but it's also very annoying. I am all over the place on this 
fucking review, aren't I? <laughs> it's fine. So that's 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 our love triangle, we'll say. It's not very triangle. <laughs> it's more like an angle. <laughs> Anyways. Uh, Noah has a best friend named Becca. Who we don't hear a lot of. And we get very frustrated with. Like, why won't you just answer Noah's phone calls? And she also, like, dates a turf. We don't date turfs in this house, girl. Um, so, there's, like, some animosity between them. Despite being, like, best friends literally forever. So, there's, like that kind of tension which is always included in young adult am I right my favorite okay I love Devin Devin should be the main focus of this book not Noah just saying but who I actually love is Brian <laughs> Brian is Noah's older brother that he is staying with for the summer he is so defensive it's so great he's so supportive He's adorably clueless at the same time like Noah's like I think it might be time for me to like get a, a get a binder. And they're like, oh yeah, I'll take you to Target later. And he's like, I can't, I can't get a binder at Target. And he's like, yeah, they're like three bucks in the stationery. And I was just like, ah! <laughs> Brian, <laughs> no, <laughs> it's adorable. Um, Brian also is like super in love with this girl, Maggie. And then she like says something really horrible about Noah. And he's just like, okay, we're breaking up like right now. I'm going to drive you home. Bye. Like, get the fuck out. <laughs> so Brian's amazing. I love Brian. <laughs> a little bit of like, um, a little bit like an Oracle character, like good advice, good advice, good advice, right? And that's almost like all you hear them say, but I love him anyways. <laughs> so it's fine. <laughs> so that's like our big five characters in this. But yeah, like I said, Noah, bit of a spoiled brat. Um, in the first week of being in Denver, spends $400 on his parents' credit card, and then the parents cut him off, and he's like, why? Bitch, you spent $400 in a week! <laughs> what parent wouldn't cut you off, you know? Um, so that's why he has to get a job. But, um, Noah does grow a little bit in good ways. But still ends up being kind of a spoiled brat at the end because like by the end they're talking like oh we can do this and this oh don't worry I'll just ask the bank of mom and dad and it's like did you did you not learn anything did you not learn anything <sighs> okay <laughs> so there's that little bit that I'm like not super into <laughs> um but yeah Despite our original meet cute happening in a bookshop, almost none of this takes place in a bookshop. Just as a fair warning, if you're like, ooh, we're gonna get some bookshop romance, you're not. Um, I do have problems with like the meet cute diary itself. The reason the troll comes around is because they're like, all of these stories that they're posting are fake. And they are, but like, I guess Noah's posting such specifics that they're all happening in Miami where he was living. And so someone was like, how the fuck do you have this many meet cutes happening in this city when there's only maybe like this many trans kids nationwide and you're like, yeah, they're all in Miami. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why would you run a diary like that? Why would you, why would you run something that's supposed to be like happy endings for trans kids to have hope and look forward and make it so obviously fake if you're using such specific things that they can all happen in Miami. So like, no one might be a touch dumb, <laughs> you know? Uh, why would you do that? He's like, I scout locations, cute coffee shops, ice cream places, and like, Becca helps me. And I'm like, do you really need to do that? I don't understand teenagers. It's fine. Um, so that's the, that's the biggest problem I have with, like, the Miyuku Diary itself. By the end, it gets sorted. It's... Alright, um, the book is broken up into really weird chapters that will serve as, like, a subplot to another thing. Plot? Not a subplot. Anyways, it's, like, the 12 steps to love that Noah has, like, thought out for relationships, and this is how it's supposed to be, and I'm just like... Oh, teenagers. It's, it's, it sounds like something you'd read in, like, a 90s, 2000s, like, teen magazine. 
like here's the 12 steps to make him fall in love with you kind of thing you know and so it kind of feels like that <laughs> where you're kind of like is this is this necessary like it does have to, it's so very lightly worked into the story and it's just kind of like it's a little cringe I'm not gonna lie the, the the 12 steps to love thing is is a little cringe <laughs> um it's, yeah. I just don't even want to like touch it. I'm just like, ugh. <laughs> ugh. <laughs> okay. Um, what else can I say? I mean, I enjoyed reading it for the most part because I could like see Noah and Drew in this like super fucking toxic relationship. And I was just like, this isn't good. Something's gonna happen, right? I was getting frustrated that like three quarters of the book is Noah and Drew dating. <laughs> and I was like, can we not? <laughs> can we? That, that new friend you just made, I like the new friend, <laughs> you know? <laughs> like some kind of mom, like, oh, maybe you should go hang out with this person, sweetie. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's what I felt like reading this. On that note, this book is very PG, which I was super appreciative of because sometimes when I'm reading young adults and there's like a sex scene and they're like 16, 17, I feel really gross. <laughs> Like, adult, fucking lay it on me. I will take whatever you have. But, like, when it's when it's literal teenagers, I feel icky reading it. <laughs> it's just like, oh. I should look away now. <laughs> I don't want this is a page or two. Okay, we're good. You know, like, I don't know. As an adult now, I feel just gross about it. I feel gross about it. So this book does not have this. Like, this book has kissing and, ooh, it's touching my hips, you know? Like, it's mild. <laughs> Very PG. I mean, he is 16. <laughs> but also on that note, he made some jokes that I'm like, I don't know how I feel about them. Because, like, obviously, like, biologically, Noah is still female and so like makes jokes about having a uterus etc and I was kind of like this feels weird I guess because I guess because they're still kind of in that like transitioning phase they're like oh you know like I don't know I don't know obviously I'm not trans. I've never been trans. I don't know how things, like, how thoughts would go for that. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's a dark humor, like, block up a wall kind of thing. I don't, I don't know. There was just two, two or three of them making jokes about, like, uteruses or having children or whatever, and I was just like, weird. <laughs> I mean, one of them was funny and one of them wasn't, so I'm kind of like, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, so yeah, overall, it's cute. It's nice. It's nice. It is nice to celebrate the joy of others, which is the thing I'm always all about here, right? So it's nice to celebrate that joy and it's nice that there's a happily ever after, basically. <laughs> Best we can get for, you know. A teenager in a town that they don't live in for the summer kind of thing right <laughs> so i love brian adorable drew can fucking rot in hell i wish the book was about Devin. <laughs> but that's the summation of it all right so on goodreads 7208 ratings uh work out to a 3.3 i think a lot of people that rated lower had the same kind of problem that i did where Noah just feels like a spoiled brat and you really wanted to follow someone else instead. Mostly Devin. <laughs> so, I mean, it was cute. Cute right in the title. Like, come on. It was cute. <laughs> I enjoyed it. Like, I don't regret reading it at all, of course, right? But, like, I don't, I don't know. It's not going to be for everyone. And I understand that because it is young adult. A lot of adults have fucking attitude about that. I don't know why. Dumb as fuck. Anyways, <laughs> it's cute. I enjoyed reading it. It took me a couple days. 
build some space when my internet was cut out from my father-in-law running over the cable internet with the lawnmower. <laughs> so it was good. I enjoyed it. I recommend. Is it read? Yes. All right. <laughs> Thanks for hanging out and we will see you around next time.